everybody video here for you today we're going to go back to ancient america this is a place i talked about maybe about three years ago when i was just starting my ancient america series this is one of the more fascinating places we have in ancient america this is called the spiral mounds in oklahoma and it's located on the arkansas river right down here some of these videos i made about three years ago and especially the ones on the more important sites i'm remaking some of them just didn't like the way they sounded but here, this is the spiral mounds. There's a couple main grouping of mounds here. There's one right here and one right there. We'll take a look at some old pics and what they look like today. But there it is, right on the Arkansas River. Another reason why I'm making this video is the spiral mounds have popped up in a few articles recently. Here is one. Dig into the spiral mounds mystery at the National Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma City. They have a little video attached here. They show some of the artifacts. But this place is getting a little more recognition lately here is an effigy pipe very intricately made here are some looks when they were excavating the mounds and what went on here in the 1930s is quite the story to say the least here is a decorative mace i guess that's what you would call it here is a raptor effigy pipe here is a decorated shell coming from the Gulf of Mexico. National Geographic just came out with the spiral mounds here. This little known Native American society was once as powerful as the Aztecs and the Incas. And finally, this is getting reported on correctly. It says, when they were unearthed in 1935, Oklahoma spiral mounds were dubbed a King Tut tomb in the Arkansas Valley by the Kansas City Star. The mounds held thousands of richly decorated, sophisticated artifacts from the North American Mississippian people. I will leave this link below. Now down on ground level at the park, you probably only notice the few remaining mounds. Those are probably really about the only noticeable things in the park. But if we look at LIDAR here, you notice the numerous circular enclosures here, the smaller ones, probably dwellings, other things pop out here. But a lot of stuff right under the ground here. Here is one website I will leave below, but they show many different things here. Here is a decorated conch shell. Here are some of the mounds from decades ago. Here is a sign at the site today. Here's some imagery put on a conch shell. Now is this a scene from everyday life? Or are these the paddler gods kind of rowing to the afterlife like the many boat scenes in the tombs in Egypt? I think that's a good question to ask. Buffalo at the site. Here is another decorated conch shell. Artifacts at the museum. Here is a human effigy pipe. This group certainly probably had a shamanic element to it. Here's a human effigy. Here is one of the mounds from decades ago. Some imagery on an artifact. Here are archaeologists looking at some pottery put back together. Here is them excavating one of the mounds back about 90 years ago. Archaeologists looking at some pottery. I will leave this link below. Now what happened at the spiral mounds about 90 years ago, roughly, is quite the story. Let's just do a little reading here. It says, the leaders themselves, more than 1,100, were interred in the Great Burial Mound, laid to rest with ceremonial items denoting their importance in this life and the life beyond. The bones of revered ancestors, ceremonial regalia, elaborate jewelry, axes, maces, blankets, and beads, and effigy pipes, treasures of pearl and copper and shell, were buried together and left undisturbed for 600 years until they were unearthed in the 1930s. Few places on the continent are steeped in more prehistory and mystery, and yet and yet. And a lot of these artifacts are reconstructions and the mounds are reconstructed. There was a lot of destruction here. Something called the Picola Mining Company went into these mounds, dynamited it, tried to take all the artifacts they could. Here is a look at the Craig Mound at the site. This is where all the interments were found. Over a thousand of them, I believe. But in the 1930s, they found many artifacts in here. They formed what is called the Picola Mining Company. And they pretty much looted and destroyed this place. Kind of a sad story coming from ancient America. I believe a news article in a Kansas City paper in December of 1935 kind of gave people a heads up that there was a lot of artifacts in here this mining company was developed this place was looted now right now i'm going to play about one minute from a clip from megalithomania uk hugh newman at the site here 
He shows some artifacts, goes over some of the history of the place. And if some of you aren't subbed Megalithomania UK yet, go over there and give them a sub. They are approaching 100,000 subs, and I know that's a nice milestone to go over. Behind me is Craig Mound. Now, this is like an elongated earthwork. Uh, it was four mounds joined together. Uh, the Great Mortuary Mound was 30 foot, 33 feet high and the full length of the mound used to be 350 feet long. Now, we know it was excavated and mined by the Pecola Mining Company between 1933 and 1935-36, and they basically dug haphazardly into the mound and pretty much destroyed it. This is the reconstruction behind us. Uh, thousands of artifacts were discovered here, literally thousands. Uh, copper, shell, stone, basketry, uh, fabric, and so on and so forth. That became known as the King Tut of the Arkansas Valley. Uh, so many were taken that eventually, when the lease ran out, there was like nothing left, but there was just literally thousands here. But it was not just that that was found here at the site. I will leave the link to this full video below if you want to know what Hugh goes into here. But some old newspaper articles is one of the things. Here is another website I will leave below. Just reading a little more of the general history. It says, regarded by many archaeologists as one of the four most important prehistoric sites east of the Rocky Mountains. They think Spiro began around 800, 900 AD, right in that area. Could it go back further? Well, of course it could. Ferdinand de Soto encountered the Mississippians during his long march through the south. And this is one of the sites that he came across. Some sites in Georgia and Florida also are noted there. It says no one knows exactly where this culture began, but there is a general agreement that it spread eastward from the Mississippi during the century or two before 1000 AD. And it says here, archaeologists believe the Spiral Mound site was occupied from about 850 AD to around 1450, so about 600 years. It, sells, it says conch shells found at Spyro undoubtedly came from as far away as South Florida. So that's interesting. Artifacts from Illinois, Tennessee also found. It says, also fascinating is the fact that several of the 12 known mounds at Spyro form a sort of giant calendar for tracking the seasons the mounds were constructed to create a unique alignment when the sun rose and set on the solstice and equinox days, marking the key seasons. Here are some of the effigy pipes found at spiral mounds. These are very interesting artifacts, probably used in afterlife rituals. But a bowl on the back, you put a replaceable stem in one end. Just cool artifacts. I've shown these in Ohio and other places. Here are some copper spools, probably used as jewelry. Here is a copper plate, an avian human anthropomorphic figure found here at Spiral Mounds. The Spiral Mounds has a fascinating history, mined for artifacts in the chase of the mighty dollar in the 1930s. Things had to be put back together here. But here is a grainy pick. These little tombs were looted of artifacts. Here is one of them, the Hero Twins. That's a story that comes from the Mayans. Now eventually one large burial chamber was documented here. This is what they found at the entrance here. Effigy stone pipes and water bottles, an alligator stone pipe, 30 copper axes right here, pearl beads. Down here, 10 baskets of sheets of copper, 20 stone pipes here, two effigy pipes in the middle, three blankets, and 800 pounds of shell beads. Found projectile points down here on the left, altar with blankets and beads. And then above that it says human mass in a basket. So it appears they had artifacts here for the afterlife and things that were important to them in everyday, everyday life. But man, 800 pounds of shell beads, 30 copper axes, 10 baskets of sheets of copper. That's pretty incredible. I will also leave the link to this lecture. This came out in April of 2019, the SAR School for Advanced Research. Spiro Archaeology Site Travels on the Path of Souls with Kent Riley. And I've talked about the Path of Souls at Cahokia, Moundville, the importance of Orion, the Milky Way. But here is a little bit from that lecture, and I will leave this full link below. Okay, so they began to take a look at the hollow chamber 
And this is, I won't read these out loud, but you just look at them. Look how many, how much stuff there was. All right. Okay. Pipes and pearls and maces and cane bundles and, and what uh, Jim thinks is the burial, I do not. And uh, the big boy pipe, uh, stacks of blankets, 800 shell beads, just a lot of stuff. Okay, which brings us to the Pawnee Star Mount. Okay, the Stawny, Pawnee Star Mount, uh, when it was uh, initially uh, brought to the attention of astronomers uh, right after the turn of the century, they were very excited. Uh, they thought it would show the heavens as they understood it, but they couldn't make any sense out of it. Uh, but uh, the Bell Labs uh, ran it through in 1983, and they suddenly realized that what you're looking at is the stars and their positions at the dawning of February 19th, 8634. Okay, now, is that star map that old? I would doubt it, in the same way that we have uh, biblical information copied over and over again. But this shows the day of creation, what the sky looked like on the day of creation. Okay, now, something interesting about these Kadoan people, and that is that they saw constellations as sacred bundles. They sold them as sacred bundles, and each of their villages had a relationship to one of these sacred bundles. Okay. Now, when Brown and uh, George Sable began to look at these things, they saw that the entire list of the powers that were important for the creation of the world were contained on this map. Sun, moon, black star, north star, wolf or wolf got fool star, wind stars, chiefs in council, which is corona borealis. Do you remember, the, I told you we had six wooden men on the eastern side, okay, and I showed you one of them, okay, that's corona borealis. Okay, so here we go. Here's the actual star map. Here's the sky with the different bundles. Here's the Milky Way, okay? It runs across this way. Here's Corona. Now look at this. Here's the chamber, okay? Here's the relationship. I can't even see that myself. Let me get out of here. Yeah. Here's the Milky Way. Okay. All these objects we've been talking about were set up as if they were the inhabitants of that dawning sky. You are literally, when you look uh, at the, the hollow chamber and its contents, you were looking at the dawning of creation, that day, creation day. Now, let me ask you something. What did I say was going on in that area at this time? Drought, okay, it was a terrible drought. Uh, right now, we're looking at this explanation with the understanding that what they were trying to do when they made the hollow chamber was really, tr uh, they were trying to recreate tr creation. They said, you know, things are messed up. Let's start all over again. The story of the spiral mounds is pretty fascinating. The artifacts that were found here, the mining company that destroyed this place, they based what they put in this tomb as far as artifacts based on the stars, the heavens was the place of creation and the afterlife. According to these people, the path of souls, I've talked about that at Moundville and Cahokia, other places, but this place was destroyed in the 1930s, pretty much by amateur archeologists. But I will leave a few links below, check out Hugh's video, and also this lecture with Kent Riley. Thought that was very interesting. That's about a 42 minute long lecture. And he says that star map comes from around 635. I did this video on Copan and the Mayans and the Orion Nebula. Seems 652 was an important day to the Mayans. So does that have anything to do with that star map? Well, I don't know. It could, I guess. That is a video on the spiral mounds. 
National Geographic said they were as powerful as the Aztecs and the Inca. This culture probably had to do with Moundville and Cahokia and some of these larger sites, Toltec Mounds, Emerald Mounds, but that was probably one large kingdom. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.